happy Sunday morning, everybody. Uh, this is recorded coming to you on Sunday morning because across the street in the distance there, we're having fall family day today. Uh, hundreds of people out enjoying worship together, the word together, uh, lots of good food together, fun and games together, just celebrating who we are as a church family. But for those of you that join us online, either you couldn't be here today or maybe you watch us from a distance, I didn't want to let the Sunday go by without sharing uh, the same word with you today. So thanks for taking just a few minutes, it won't be as long as normal, to give me a chance to share with you what we're actually sharing across the street right now with our church family. I want to talk to you today, you know, last week if you saw the message, Pastor Drew uh, did a great job, an excellent job kicking off our series about holiness. And uh, we'll get back to that topic more in detail uh, next week. Uh, but we're gonna come back to start today to something that Pastor Drew said on Sunday. He said that God wants us to be healthy believers, and that's why he wants us to pursue holiness. If you missed that message, go back and watch it because it was great. Uh, but today, we're gonna have a little fun for Fall Family Day. And I just wanna ask you, what is your favorite season? Now, to be honest, it's a little bit hotter today than we had hoped. You know, you can kind of hope for that kind of low to mid 70s overcast kind of day. Uh, and that's not what we're getting today. Uh, but what is your favorite season? And of course, the joke is in Tennessee, if you hang around for 10 minutes, uh, the weather will change. So if you don't like it, just hold on because something else is coming. So whether you're a winter, spring, summer, fall person, here's what science supposedly says about you. Uh, if winter is your favorite season, science tells us that you probably tend to be an introverted homebody. Uh, you like curling up on the couch with a hot beverage and that sounds like a perfect afternoon to you. Don't know if that's true of you or not, but that's what science apparently says. Uh, if spring is your favorite season, uh, science supposedly tells us that you crave new experiences and you like green outdoor space. Uh, if summer is your favorite season, it says that you love getting outside, you love to travel, you love having an active lifestyle. And if fall is your favorite season, uh, which by the way is the correct answer, and you're my people, uh, it says that you love new things and have a constant desire for change. I've got to admit that is often true of me. Uh, the reality is everyone has a favorite season. But truth be told, we'd probably get sick of that season if that's the only season we ever experienced. Uh, when Susan and I lived on the central coast of California, it was in the 60s, probably about nine months out of the year. And I know that sounds great because I'm a sweatshirt guy. I mean, that's just, that's, you know, my favorite time. Uh, but 60s, often overcast. In fact, in July, I don't know what you call that hat that goes on your head. So people here call them toboggans. I thought a toboggan was a sled. Uh, we call them a beanie. Uh, but in July, when we were selling fireworks for our church youth group, we were often in sweatshirts, beanies, and uh, blankets because July was just a crazy month out there as the marine layer rolled in. You know, but there's also other kinds of seasons, not just weather seasons. Uh, there's football season or basketball season or baseball season. If you're a sports enthusiast, it's always sports season. Uh, maybe hunting season is your thing or fishing season. Uh, maybe it's uh, lake season or camping season. If you're a teenager, maybe it's prom season or graduation season. Uh, or my favorite, if you're a Bugs Bunny or Elmer Fudd fan, there's a wabbit season and duck season. If you don't know what that is, you're too young. There's also seasons of life, right? There's a childhood season and an adolescent season. There is a newlywed season and a parenthood season. There is an empty nest season and a retirement season. And I know that all those seasons don't necessarily apply to everybody, but for the most part, it hits us pretty good. Uh, there's also spiritual seasons of life. Uh, some scholars have identified you know, five or six uh, different spiritual seasons of life. I'm not so much interested in getting a number uh, as it is identifying with a few of them. Uh, there's dry seasons, right? There's testing seasons. There are waiting seasons. Uh, but there's also joyful seasons and celebration seasons. After the flood that, of course, covered the whole earth, here's what God said in Genesis chapter 8, verse 22. He said, as long as the earth remains, there will be planting and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, 
day and night. The psalmist wrote uh, Psalm 104. He echoed this reality. He said uh, in verse 19, he said, you made the moon to mark the seasons. So seasons are something that God created that he put into place. And so today, just for a few minutes, I want to talk to us about embracing our season. And you say, well, pastor, what does that have to do with holiness? Well, holiness comes in seasons. Things that God speaks to us, that he asks of us, that he shows us. And when we embrace the season that we're in, it gives us the opportunity to grow in maturity and to grow toward holiness. I want to read a verse to you out of the book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, actually two verses, verses seven and eight. And here's what it says. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord and have made the Lord their hope and confidence. They are like trees planted along a riverbank with roots that reach deep into the water. Such trees are not bothered by the heat or worried by long months of drought. Their leaves stay green and they never stop producing fruit. When I read that, my devotions a few months ago, it reminded me of Psalm chapter one and verse three. This may be a passage you might be familiar with, maybe you've memorized. It's talking about those who have chosen to follow God with their lives. And it says, they are like trees planted along the riverbank, bearing fruit in each season. Their leaves never wither, and they prosper in all they do. So it's talking about trees and seasons. Let me ask you a kind of a basic question. What does a healthy tree do? Probably never been asked that on a Sunday before. Uh, really, two basic things. A healthy tree stands firm. It stands while it draws nourishment from the soil and from the rain. And the Bible gives us the analogy many times of the Word of God being the soil, right, or the foundation upon which we stand, and rain to the Holy Spirit. Uh, the Word gives us our foundation. The Holy Spirit brings times of refreshing to our lives. So we stand firm because we draw our strength from God's Word and are refreshed by our fellowship with the Holy Spirit. The second thing a healthy tree does is it bears fruit, and notice these two words, in season. No, not all trees are fruit trees, I get that, but all trees produce some kind of proof of life uh, or fruit, right? It could be actual fruit, could be green leaves, could be branches that grow. Uh, actually, bark is a great indication of the health of a tree. Uh, but notice again what the Bible says, it bears fruit in season. Here's the reality of life that we don't like. Not all seasons are fruitful. They're just not. We prefer them to be, but they can't be. That's not the way God designed it. While some seasons are fruitful, they don't come without us going through the other seasons, just like it is for a tree. Some seasons are growing seasons. Some seasons are pruning seasons. Some seasons seem to be dying seasons, right, where the leaves fall and the branches are empty and everything looks completely barren. Some of you hearing this today are going through a season like that. You feel dry, you feel empty, you feel barren, and you're certainly not seeing fruit from your labor. You know, I've spent a lot of my life praying for a new season. We even sung that song several years ago, it's a new season, it's a new day, that might be familiar to you because we're always looking forward to a new season. And yes, you know, faith allows us to look forward to a fruitful season. But catch this today, one of the biggest mistakes that we make as Christians is looking past the value of our current season. I wanna say that again, one of the biggest mistakes we make as children of God, as followers of Jesus, is looking past the value of our current season, right? If we don't go through the pruning season and the dying season and eventually the growing season, we're never going to come to the fruitful season. Here's what King Solomon, the wisest man who ever lived, although he didn't act it all the time, said about seasons. And this may be a familiar passage with you, so hang with me for a minute. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, for everything there is a season, a time for every activity under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die a time to plant and a time to harvest, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down 
and a time to build up, a time to cry and a time to laugh, a time to grieve and a time to dance, a time to embrace and a time to turn away, a time to search and a time to quit searching, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be quiet and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. And I love verse 11. It says, God has made everything, everything beautiful for his time. So everything has a season. And every season that God allows into our life has a purpose. But we can't look past the value of the season we're in just because we prefer another season. I can't endure summer to get to fall. I can't endure winter to get to spring. I have to embrace the value of each season that God has brought into my life for His purposes, even though I may not understand yet the purpose of that season. The last part of verse 11, Ecclesiastes 3, Solomon gives us the key to trusting God regarding our current season. The last half of that verse says this, He has planted eternity in the human heart, but even so, people cannot see the whole scope of God's work from beginning to end. Solomon acknowledges that we as frail humans can't understand everything that God is doing. We don't see it all the time, but we have to trust in the fact that he's faithful and he always sees it. It's been his plan from the beginning. Even when we mess up in a season, he will redeem that season for his glory and for our good. He sees clearly what we can't yet see. If I can encourage you to do anything today, it's this. Embrace the season you're in. Trust God's process in your life. You know, the Israelites were wandering in the wilderness. They're frustrated at God, but God began to prophesy to them what their future season would hold. Check out this verse. It's kind of a weird one because they wanted an instant breakthrough, right? They instantly wanted to take over the promised land and get it all. But God says, hey, not so fast. In Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 22, it says, the Lord your God will drive those nations out ahead of you, but catch this phrase, little by little. You will not clear them all away at once. Otherwise, the wild animals would multiply too quickly for you. In other words, if God would have given them what they wanted, the wild animals overtaking the land would have overtaken them. So God says, we're gonna do this little by little because that's what's best for you, even though you may want it all now. We want it instantly. God has a better plan because he sees things that we don't see. And that's why we have to embrace the season that God has allowed us to be in at this current time. You know, right now I'm going through a season. Um, I had braces, I don't know if you did as a teenager. Uh, I have braces again at 55. So they're right here, I won't show them to you. Uh, but uh, years ago when I had my cardiac arrest, I had four lower teeth here in the front that uh, suffered pretty significant trauma. And so for the last 11 years, I've tried to keep them all. Well, one of them uh, basically finally died. And so we had to pull the tooth. And so I'm missing a tooth uh, in my lower mouth. And so now I have braces at 55 years old, like I'm a teenager, uh, you know, trying to close that gap in my teeth. And, uh, you know, my dentist, who I love immensely, says, it's going to be great. The final product's going to look good. I hope so. But I'm not enjoying the process. That's just the reality of of what it is. Here's the word of the Lord to you today. If you haven't heard it the other 27 times, I've already said it. Whatever season you're in, God is with you. Embrace it. There's a purpose. God's going to teach you something that you need. He's going to make your roots grow down deeper. He's going to do in you what He needs to do so that your next season can be fruitful. In due season, see, you're a tree of righteousness. You're a tree of righteousness, so stand firm. And in due season, you will bear fruit. So finally, I want to finish with this as the sun's coming out, the lighting's changing on the video. Uh, how, do we, how do we embrace our season? Two just quick practical steps. How do we embrace our season? Number one, we ask the Holy Spirit what he wants to teach us in this season. You gotta ask him, you gotta get in your prayer closet. Holy Spirit, what are you trying to teach me? What am I missing? What's the purpose of what I'm going through? Don't rush past it. 
What's the purpose for what you're experiencing? Second, we hold on to the promise in our season that God is always faithful. You see, when we choose to trust Him, we realize that in every season, uh, we've got a reason to praise the Lord. Now, across the street today, uh, as we finish up this message, Pastor Shelton and the team is going to lead us in a song called Reason to Praise by Corey Asbury. Uh, we can't show it to you, uh, the original artist, because of copyright issues. But I would encourage you, man, whether YouTube or Apple Music or Spotify or whatever your thing is, go find that song when this video closes off and listen to Reason to Praise by Corey Asbury. Because no matter the season you're in, you've got a reason to praise because God is doing a work in your life. I just wanna pray for you and then uh, speak the blessing over you that we do every single Sunday. And I know this has been kind of a strange setting outside, uh, noisy, uh, vehicles driving by, all that kind of thing, but that's kind of what it's gonna be like today uh, outside with our service here on campus. So I didn't want you to miss out on the experience. All right, let's pray. Father, I thank you for every single person watching this live or watching this down the road. You know where they are. You know what they're going through. You know the season they're in. Help us to not look past our season and miss what you're trying to teach us right now. If we want to bear fruit in due season, which is your promise to us, we will bear fruit, then we have to embrace the seasons that are not seemingly fruitful because of the work that you're doing in us. God, I pray that everyone listening today would find a deep trust in you, that their faith in you would grow strong, no matter what they're facing, no matter what they're going through, knowing that you're walking with them. And in due time, in due time, Scripture says we'll reap if we don't faint, if we don't give up. In due time, we're going to produce some fruit. God, help us to believe and stand on that promise today in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, here's the quick blessing for you today, and I thank you for joining us. Uh, if, if you forgot that we had the Paul Family Day today and there's still time to get here, man, come on down. There's been plenty of food for everybody. All right, but let me speak this over you. Be blessed in knowing that there is a purpose to every season that God allows in your life. Be blessed as you stand firm, allowing the Holy Spirit to produce fruit in you and through you in due season. Be blessed as you allow the Holy Spirit to help you embrace your current season, knowing that everything will work together for your good. Be blessed today in Jesus' name. God bless you, church. We'll see you next Sunday.